my goodness, look how little foam is on the top of this. That doesn't look very good at all. Look at that. This. See that? This one is having the same issues. And that's not going to be strong enough. Hey everybody, welcome back today to Retro Tech. I've got a special double unboxing for you. Now it's starting to get fall here and the colors on the leaves are starting to change. The temperature is starting to get cooler, especially in the evenings. And I realize it's been a couple of months since I've actually done any real unboxing. Today I've got a special, again, that's two for one video. I have two monitors that are the exact same. I got them from one company off of eBay. It looked to be a medical recycling company. These are 14 M2 MDUs, I believe, and hopefully they survive shipping. The cost to me was under $600 for the two of them, and again, that's shipped. And if all that goes well and the shipping here goes well, then that's a good deal for me to be able to pick up two of these. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the top box up here. We'll use my handy dandy box opener from the outside the packaging looks pretty good we're going to start again with this one because this was the first box that i received uh that it was a two package deal for the shipping but the other box took two additional days to show up it got lost in transit and they both it finally arrived so i figured it was time to open both of them and hopefully we don't have any damage here uh, but oof, gosh, oh, 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 I'm not liking this. I'm not liking this. And I'm going to open this part right under here. And then I'll come in. And before I do anything else, I'll show you what we got. Here's our detail packing. My goodness, look how little foam is on the top of this. That doesn't look very good at all. Look at that. Just oof. two little pieces. Now the back and the front do have bigger chunks. I'm checking the back right now to make sure it hasn't like collapsed in on itself from a drop. Now the problem is, is if there's any kind of drop when you pack your monitor like this, any kind of drop will result in a breaking, a breakage, whatever. Again, on the sides, we've got very little packaging over here on each side. Very little foam. I'd be a nervous wreck. This came from uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And so that's a pretty good trip up here to Virginia, I'd say maybe 10, 12 hours. So if I look at the front here, I don't see the tube moved inside. That's good. What we'll do is we'll get this out, look a little bit closer at the packing here, and then we'll take a look at the monitor. So that's the inside packing. Not a whole lot to it. And thankfully that, I mean, that's a thick, nice piece of foam to put right there for the front and and thick for the bottom that's all good but the sides was what worried me the most so let's see about the box here at least it's a nice double walled box we've got there here's a closer look at our pvm it doesn't appear to have any damage on it it is like i said a 14.2 mdu from january of 2001 the plan is to take these inside to the CRT bunker and we'll get them tested. So here's number one. Let's open our second box. All right, everybody, we're going to open up our second box here now. I was less confident in this box. It looks like it took a little bit more of a beating on its travel. It also took a couple more days to get here, which is never a good thing. I'm just going to open it up and hopefully everything on it is, is just as nice as the last monitor was. And then we can get this one down in the bunker and test it also but very similar packing to the last time honestly this one may be packaged a little bit a little bit better actually so let's get in here i'll show you a closer look at what i'm talking about this time we've got more padding on the top for sure a couple more pieces here see how this one has pretty good amount of padding all the way around even on the sides so that's a lot better than just the simple little padding that was there this is it's hollow, but at least at least it's got a little bit more cushion and protection. That's a good two inches almost. And I'm I'm more confident that this one will have survived now seeing the packaging. It's the same style box, double wall. Let's get CRT out here first. 
and take a closer look at it. Hopefully nothing's broken on it. It's very dirty, but that's okay. Again, we've got that nice dark M2 tube on there. And it's just filthy, but the tube's in good shape. So is the bezel. And it appears that we do have successful delivery of these bad boys. This one's from May of 2001. Let's go get it down now into the bunker with the other one. And then we'll get the console into it and run some tests and see how it looks. I've made it down here into the CRT bunker and I'm ready to test both of these CRTs for the first time. Again, these were advertised as working. This one closest to me was the first one that we opened. And then right next to that, we've got that second one we opened. I've got them set up on a loop and I've done that using S-Video. S-Video is going into this monitor and then it's daisy chained out into this monitor. And the way I'm using it, getting S-Video from the console is using Insurrection Industries S-Video cable. It's a great S-Video cable if you're looking for one. And then we're coming out of a Super Nintendo here and we're gonna just turn it on. And again, this is the very first time I've attempted to do this. So I'm gonna turn this on. Hopefully we'll get the CRT to power on and it is powering on and the first thing i want to do is make sure that we are on line b which is our s video line and i've got a picture coming up here and okay so that is good look at this color let's let me show you what i mean maybe we've got an issue too with our tube that i didn't see yeah look at it it's way off color over here now it could be because these are so net close to each other they could be interfering with one another at least initially so what we'll try to do is go in here and maybe do a quick degauss if we pull up something let's go pull up the 240p test suite yeah and you can kind of see that discoloration right there we'll go to test patterns and we'll go to this you see that so let's start by just trying to use the regular degauss button and that's not going to be strong enough so oof hopefully the tube's okay but let's not really concern ourselves with that so much first let's try this second one uh, this might be something that i just need to try a stronger degausser on make sure that this one's turned on to line b also and maybe we'll have a solid white screen turn up over there Turn that contrast down. The remote button is not turned on over here, but this one is having the same issue. So I'm wondering if that's because they're so close together or if they both just have, have not been turned on in such a long time. See that? The coloring is a little bit off too. And that could just be different color temperatures. But what we can do is, let's turn this one off. Let's separate them a little bit. And maybe we can degauss them and get them looking a little bit better after that. But if I separate them, let's just turn on this first one and see how it looks. Still got all the discoloration. Maybe if we turn this one off, let's see what our second monitor looks like. See if we got a bunch of discoloration still on it. Yes, the discoloration is still there. We've got some dead spots. What I'm going to attempt to do now is I'm going to use my professional degaussing tool and I'm going to do it one at a time on these monitors. I'm going to set it up each one of them single and then I'm going to do this tool and I'll show you how this works and hopefully this will clear up. We'll start with this one since it's less. We'll try it and to do this right I need to move this monitor out of the way pretty much because I don't want to really uh, have it be affected as much. So we're going to move it a little bit out of the way and then we'll use our wand on this other one. All right, everybody, I've turned down our lighting on purpose so you can just see the CRT tube mostly in front of it. I'm holding this degaussing coil and what it does is it just creates a magnetic ring of interference. And if you see if I do that, look what it does to the screen when I'm up close. It really flushes the, de the degauss. So this you see how it just moves all that discoloration around. So that's actually a good sign. The fact that I can move the discoloration around so much now. The way that you properly use this tool is you're going to go in a circular motion and it should just clear this up. So let's just start right here in front of the screen and slowly move. And as I move, I'm, I'm making this circle larger and larger as I back away from the front of the screen. 
And it does clear it up some, but we still have some spots here along our sides here that are still not as pure as they should. Uh, maybe a couple more tries with this thing will clear it up. So let's just keep, keep going and keep doing it and see if that'll help. So just going to go here again, just kind of disrupt the magnetism as it sits right now and run it for just a minute. It's got a little button on there that I'm holding down and uh, we'll just get it nice and messed up there. Nice and messed up. We're going to get it all messed up here. And then now we're going to start our test again or start our uh, degaussing coil procedure where I'm just going to go and start my slow rotation and walk towards the camera and we'll do it like that. All right, here we have our screen. I've really gotten rid of all that purity problem. If you want to see me hit the degauss on the screen one more time, that built-in degausser will kind of help clear it from now on. It should be good to go. Let's go ahead and see the other colors on here. I haven't checked those yet. We've got red right there, green and blue, and it's got pretty pure, pure screen. That's the most important thing we've got fixed. The rest of this stuff will need, it will need a geometry kit and then also some cleaning and a full calibration. So that'll happen, but thankfully it really wasn't damaged. So let's get on now and see if we could fix number two with the same procedure. Now we've set up the other CRT, which is the first one we unboxed and it's got the worst purity issues. That's really ugly. We've got a purple hue here and a light blue hue here. And we're gonna just try this same degaussing coil and see if we can get that to clear up at all. Again, I'm gonna go through here and really mess up this purity as it is. See, I like the fact that I can make it move around a lot. That means that maybe I can get rid of that pretty easily just with this tool. So let's go ahead now and run the whole procedure where I start spinning it around and then I come towards the camera. Making that circle bigger and bigger as I walk away from it until I ultimately cut it off. And there you go. We still have a little bit of a hue over here on the right. Let's just see if we can clear that up with our regular onboard degaussing. Not so much. Let's try one more time. Now it looks a little better. It looks a little better to be honest with you. Let's check out our purity now. And red looks super good. Green, blue, all white. And that one too has been cleared up. Now that interference could have come from some kind of magnetism that the monitors experienced while in transit to me. And this is why this tool, this degaussing coil is something that I have never regretted buying. It's an amazing tool. I've had it for probably six years and I got it from Fry's Electronics before they went out of business. So I don't know if these are easy to get anymore. They are way bigger than some of the small ones that are just a little hand wand and they have way more powerful uh, degauss that they output and the magnetic field is bigger and more powerful and it does get extremely hot after you use it. It is very hot right now since I did those two tests and procedures back to back like that. It's like a hair dryer or something really hot. Well, thankfully I was able to clear up a lot of the purity issues just with that simple degaussing tool. And I realize a lot of people are not gonna have that tool. So if you come across a monitor with these kind of purity issues, it's gonna be difficult for you to get rid of without that kind of tool. So you might have to find somebody like me who has one, bring it to the shop and get that degaussing done. Or you may have to invest into your own degaussing cable tool or degaussing tool like I use today. If you have multiple CRTs and you collect them, this is an issue that can come up sometimes. Just magnetism can show up in your environment. It can cause trouble on your tubes. Now, I still do have a lot of work to do on both of these. So it's kind of a, I mean, it's a good deal for me. I still consider it at the price point I had paid at just under $600 for both of them, considering I was able to get them to adjust the condition they are in right now. The only issue is with this one, I'm still having some trouble with the buttons. I do have extra button boards in case something is wrong with that. I can switch that out. So just note that if you happen to be somebody that just stumbles across a deal like this, there's still a good chance that you're going to have some issues in these monitors. And that's kind of why you have to pay a premium to make sure you get one that's fully checked out. 
But there are still bargains available if you're handy and able to take a lot of the tutorials that I've been producing over the last couple of years and maybe get your monitor looking good. Uh, look for more on these, but hey, what did you guys think? What do you think of the deal? Do you think this was a good unboxing video? Uh, are you still looking out for PVMs yourself? What's a good deal that you've gotten recently on a PVM or BVM or maybe some other kind of CRT, Pro CRT? Please let me know what you think with a comment below. I will see you all next time with some more retro content.